Imagine the most violent, destructive force you can think of. An explosion. A high-speed impact. Now, imagine taking a delicate, complex piece of flying technology and shoving it right in the middle of that chaos. This isn't science fiction. This is the core question behind one of the most audacious engineering projects in recent memory. How in the world do you design a drone that can be shot out of a cannon? How do you make something built to soar through the air survive an environment that can crush solid steel? For years, the very idea was dismissed as impossible, a challenge just too extreme for modern electronics and materials. But after more than a decade of staring down those doubts, Chinese engineers have reportedly done it. They've created a drone that starts its mission not from a runway or a catapult, but from the fiery blast of a 155mm artillery gun. Before we begin with this intriguing story, we appreciate that you subscribe to our channel, share, and like our video so that we can bring you more content similar to this one. Thank you so much for your support. The forces we're talking about here are almost impossible to wrap your head around. When an artillery shell is fired, it experiences accelerations of over 3,500 g's. That's 3,500 times the force of gravity. To put that in perspective, it's like having 35 adult African elephants stand on top of you. A trained fighter pilot might black out at 9 g's. A Formula One car crash might generate 100 g's for a split second. We are talking about forces that don't just break things, they vaporize them. Any standard drone, with its circuit boards, sensors, and lightweight wings, would be turned into a puff of dust. So how did they break this barrier? The answer lies in a wild decision. To solve this ultra-modern problem, the engineers threw out the modern playbook and went back to basics with a solution built on brute force and mechanical genius. So, before we get to the how, we have to understand the why. Why would anyone go to such insane lengths? The answer boils down to two things, speed and surprise. In modern warfare, getting eyes on a target instantly is a game-changing advantage. Traditional drones, even the small, hand-launched ones, take time to get in the air. You've got to get them to a safe spot, set them up, and then wait for them to fly all the way to the target area. Bigger drones? They need runways, which are huge, vulnerable targets themselves. An artillery-launched drone flips the script entirely. Picture a battle where a commander needs to see what's over the next hill, or deep behind enemy lines, right now. Instead of waiting minutes or even hours for air support, they can just load a special shell into a standard artillery piece. Within seconds, that shell can yeet a reconnaissance drone over 10 kilometers away, ready to send back live video. This gives a massive tactical edge. It allows for lightning-fast targeting for other weapons, instant battle damage assessment, or tracking moving targets without putting soldiers in harm's way. It basically turns every artillery battery into its own rapid response recon unit. Plus, in a chaotic electronic warfare environment, where jamming can mess with complex launch systems, a dumb shell flying on a simple ballistic path is incredibly reliable. The drone inside doesn't have to do a thing until it's already at its destination. This project, known as Tianyan or Sky, was first dreamed up by Chinese military scientists back in 2013. But for years, it was mostly met with skepticism that such a thing was even possible. Beating that skepticism wasn't just about building a drone, it was about inventing a whole new way of getting things onto the battlefield. To really appreciate the solution, we have to spend a moment on the problem. It is, and I'm not exaggerating, one of the harshest environments humans have ever tried to send a complex machine through. Let's go back to those G-forces. It's not just the peak force of 3,500 Gs, or by some estimates, as high as 15,500 Gs. That's the killer. It's the violent, explosive shockwave and the brutal acceleration down the cannon barrel. Think about what's inside a normal drone. You've got the battery, a sensitive package of chemical cells. You've got the GPS, the cameras, the flight controller, all of them built on silicon circuit boards with tiny components soldered on. Under thousands of Gs, the inertia of these parts would rip them right off the board. The internal structures of the microchips themselves could shatter. The layers of the battery could slam into each other, causing an instant, fiery death. Then there's the drone's body. The wings are made to be light, often from composites or foam, to create lift. Hit them with these forces, and they wouldn't just break, 
they'd be pulverized into a fine powder inside the shell. The drone's body would be crushed into an unrecognizable chunk of plastic and metal. And even if, by some miracle, the drone survived the launch, it has another huge problem. Getting out. The shell is flying at supersonic speeds. When it reaches the right spot, the drone has to be deployed. How do you pop open a shell and push a drone out into a supersonic wind without it getting instantly torn to shreds by the air itself? Any normal deployment system, a little motor, an electronic latch, would have been destroyed by the launch. For over a decade, this problem seemed like a total dead end. As recently as last year, military experts were publicly saying that electronics just couldn't be hardened enough to survive an artillery launch, making the whole idea a non-starter. Faced with this impossible list of problems, the engineering team, a joint effort between the Shaanxi Applied Physics and Chemistry Research Institute, the Chinese Air Force, and defense contractor Norinko, made a brilliant call. If modern electronics can't survive, get rid of them. They ditched the idea of an electronic deployment and instead created a system that is purely mechanical and pyrotechnic. It's a solution that sounds like something out of a steampunk novel, a complex, clockwork-like sequence powered by a chain of tiny, controlled explosions. First, they solved the structural problem. The drone is encased in a custom-designed, hardened stainless steel frame. This protective cocoon is built to handle stresses up to 1,100 megapascals, absorbing and spreading out the insane forces of the launch to shield the delicate drone inside. But the real genius is the deployment. The whole thing is an eight-stage, non-electronic chain reaction. It starts when the shell's main fuse detonates at a set point in its flight path. This first explosion doesn't release the drone. Instead, it just kicks off the sequence. That impulse ignites another component, which creates a powerful push from the back, ejecting the drone, still safe in its capsule, out of the artillery shell. Now the capsule is flying through the air, but it's still sealed shut. A delayed igniter, set off during the ejection, burns for a very specific amount of time. When it burns out, it triggers another charge. This one creates a radial, or outward, thrust that pops open the capsule's protective panels, like a flower blooming in midair. Only then, once it's clear of the shell and all that violence, do the drone's wings unfold so it can start its flight. To make this all work, every single part had to be rethought. The tiny explosive charges had to be specially made with compounds like lead azide and boron, so they wouldn't go off accidentally from the shock of the main cannon firing. The engineers also designed a clever maze-like channel system. This design safely vents the huge pressure from the pyrotechnic charges through a series of tiny, 1mm holes, which stops explosive debris from jamming up the intricate moving parts of the deployment system. For a decade, the Tianyan project was more of a cool idea than a real thing. A concept many experts thought was impossible. Prototypes failed. The technical challenges seemed way too big. But with steady funding from the government and military, the team kept at it. The breakthrough finally happened when they went all in on the electronics-free, pyrotechnic solution. The system was then put through the ultimate test. It went through five ground detonation tests, where the pyrotechnic sequence was fired over and over to make sure it was reliable. It passed perfectly. Then came the real challenge. Five live fire launches from a 155mm cannon at a test range. In every single test, the drone survived the launch, the pyrotechnic sequence fired exactly as planned, and the drone deployed successfully, surviving forces proven to be at least 3,500 times the force of gravity. The system even showed it could work in extreme temperatures, functioning perfectly from a freezing minus 50 degrees Celsius to a blistering 80 degrees Celsius. After 12 years of hard work, the impossible had been made possible. The success of the cannon-launched drone is a bigger deal than just one clever invention. It points to a shift in how people think about drone deployment and battlefield tech. In a world increasingly worried about electronic warfare, EMPs, and signal jamming, creating a super-effective system that is mechanically tough and electronically independent is a huge strategic win. It's a return to first principles, betting on reliable physics instead of fragile circuits. This tech could completely change the speed of ground combat. Artillery units will no longer just be for shooting things. They'll be dual-purpose, able to provide their own targeting and recon on demand. 
This creates a much faster and deadlier sensor to shooter link, cutting the time between finding a target and taking it out to just minutes, or even seconds. This development is part of a bigger trend in military tech, where we're seeing the lines blur between different systems, artillery, drones, and data networks, to create a single, connected fighting force. China is also reportedly working on other advanced ideas, like converting artillery shells into glide bombs and developing drone motherships that can release swarms of smaller drones, making the future battlefield even more complicated. While other countries are developing things like air-launched glide bombs from modified artillery shells, this cannon launch system for reusable drones seems to be a unique and powerful capability. It's a powerful reminder of how persistent, out-of-the-box engineering can crack problems that once seemed like pure science fiction. The cannon launched drone is a testament to the power of engineering to solve the most extreme problems. But it's just one part of the rapidly changing world of drone technology. From spy drones the size of a mosquito to massive drone carriers, the future of flight is being rewritten as we speak. What other impossible technologies do you think we'll see become a reality in the next 10 years? Let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into extreme engineering, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next video, where we'll be exploring the incredible science behind laser-based missile defense systems. Thanks for watching.